Let's do it. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the G12 Partner Webinar. Uh, we're going to give you some updates today. We're going to talk about making selling easier with G12. So you've got customers out there, partners out, or customers and prospects out there. We're going to talk about how you can bring more into your inner circle so that you can drive more revenue for your organization. It's pretty exciting. We've got a couple of special guests that we're going to um, uh, to bring on today. So it's not just uh, uh, you know me sort of uh, chatting away. We've got really cool uh, folks that we're going to have. We're going to have uh, um, uh, a partner that we're going to introduce to you. It's right there. Uh, Portfolio Communications. Mr. Scott Muller is going to be with us. He's going to uh, have, have a little a little a little chat with everyone. Uh, we've got a really special guest, Colin Mitchell, and we'll do some intros. We'll do some appropriate intros here in a little while. I'm excited to give him the uh, uh, the big sort of rollout that uh, that he should have. Uh, same with Mr. Mr. Muller as well. Uh, oh, Jackie, Jackie, our marketing manager, is going to run through our partner portal. It is an awesome tool that you guys can utilize to, again, uh, uh, deliver information out to your prospects that you can drive more sales. This is this whole theme is about how you are going to sell more as a partner and how G12 can support you with that, right? So we're, we're pretty excited to have, uh, have Jackie run through that partner portal. We do have a few incentives and prizes to talk about as well. And that's this whole gamification thing we're talking about. We're essentially, you know, trying to drive the appropriate behavior into our partner portal. So we're going to give you some stuff, giving stuff away for it. Okay. Uh, and then best practices for podcasts and selling. Guess what? That's not my line, folks. That's going to be Mr. Colin Mitchell. And uh, we're going to, like I said, we'll do that introduction in a second here. And then we're going to open it up for discussion and questions for everyone to see what we can do to partner more effectively and efficiently. All right. So the lineup for every for our uh, webinar today, uh, you've got me. I'm the co-founder and chief revenue officer of G12 Communications. Uh, you have uh, Jackie. You want to say what you do? Hi, I support Rick in all his marketing efforts at G12 here. Um, I also actually built the partner portal, so you can always contact me if you ever have any questions. You can email me for a one-on-one -on -one if you need a uh, if you need a video rundown or just to just to talk about it. So yeah, that's that's my uh, <laughs> that's me. Everything that's beautiful at G12 comes from Jackie and Ashley. So <laughs> everything that's beautiful, so it's exciting. Uh, and then let's do it. I'll do a quick intro. I've got Colin Mitchell who's joining us and, and, and Colin is uh, the CEO of SalesCast. And uh, the reason Colin is here actually because uh, is because well, I've known him from the voice industry because Colin has a particular angle uh, on selling voice because he himself had started and sold successfully exited uh, a VoIP provider, uh, as it was Monster VoIP, right? So Colin is joining us and now he's got a different organization that he's building. And Colin, what does that new organization do? Yeah. So thanks for having me. Uh, glad to be here. Thanks, Rick. And so I am the CRO and co-founder over at SalesCast. And what we do is we produce and manage revenue generating B2B podcasts and we have something uh, prepared for you all a little bit later today. That's awesome. Thanks, Colin. That's going to be awesome to see. Uh, everyone's trying to figure out how to sell socially. What is socially? I mean, you know, what does it mean to sell socially? What does it mean to, to put out content? Because everyone's, you know, maybe not everyone has seen the Russell Brunson stuff, but it's all about, pretty, you know, uh, putting content out, putting content out, putting content out. And putting content out is, is great, but, but I think you've got to have some sort of direction, some sort of, you know, kind of focus, some sort of goals. And, and I think uh, sales cast is going to be awesome to watch your, uh, your discussion later on in the call. And, uh, and last, but certainly not least, we have a, a partner here that, uh, uh, that has been a, a, a steadfast partner for G12 communications for years and years and years, works on some of the largest accounts that G12 uh, supports and, and has been a, a strong proponent of uh, the involvement of Jeep's product set and, and a, a lot of, uh, you know, kind of a lot of uh, the things that we look at and we take in from some of these customers. So um, uh, I'll say Mr. 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 Scott Moeller with Portfolio Communications. Uh, welcome to the call, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> for everybody that doesn't know me, I'll, I'll give a little background on myself. I was at Lumen for 22 years. And I've been an independent broker, well, consultant for portfolio uh, communications for about eight years now. And uh, been working with G12, gosh, four or five years, whatever it was. Um, uh, and the reason for that, and the reason why I sell a lot of G12, uh, I'll cover that here shortly, but 
long story short, uh, Kobe Phillips, and I think a lot of people know who he is in the industry. He came to me one day and he said, hey, you got to get to know this little company out of Kirkland. They're rocking it. They're doing great things for their customers and it's personal and it's fantastic service and it's market competitive. And the second I talked with Rick uh, about 30 minutes after Kobe told me about that, we have been hooked at the hip ever since. That's me. And uh, uh, anyway, right. um, I'm actually here today at a cutover, post cutover support for a very large customer, um, 1,300 users. And this is over a nine month period. This is about uh, our ninth office. And I'm gonna tell you a quick story of why this is a big deal for G12 and why this was important to have G12 involved in this and how it paid off. I work with Ring Central. I work with all the different uh, vendors, all the different providers, 8x8, eight eight, Next Eva, everybody. And one of the reasons um, I, I select G12 and recommend G12 a lot uh, more so than others in, a, in most situations is because of what has happened on this very cutover. I mean, this is the ninth location that we've done over eight months and we're doing another one in two weeks. But in this particular case, it was a great example I wanna share with you about how things went right because it was G12 and not someone else. Um, did the cutover last Thursday night, came in the next morning to do post cutover support and found out that the nine offices, the eight offices that we had cut over in the previous six, seven months were all having intermittent call issues and the vendor was being blamed by the customer's firewall manager. And that created all sorts of tension, as you might imagine. Instantly, G12 was on the phone with that firewall uh, vendor. And for two straight days, a uh, firewall vendor, uh, hey, that can't be our problem. Uh, there's no way a firewall can do this. We didn't touch anything on any of the other locations, so it has to be your, your G12 service. Um, about midway through the second full day of this with constant testing, uh, we got an apology from the firewall vendor uh, because it was something that they did on their application level with the firewall that messed everything up. Cost this customer a lot of money, cost them a lot of operation. Um, G12 came out um, looking heroic because they helped solve the problem and identify the problem. That's not the first time that's happened with my customers. As we've all found out with, with working with a variety of phone vendors, SD-WANs, name, name, a, name a sale, name a migration. It's what happens afterward that counts. And that's why I am laying down in front of a car for G12 if there's trouble, because every single time I've had trouble, G12 has stepped up to the plate and, and risen to the occasion and come out, fix things for customers that they're not even specialists in. Um, I've got a hospital uh, that, that had a, a firewall issue that they thought wasn't a firewall issue and it, it got fixed by G12 and they're not even certified in that firewall. Uh, it's just, they were after several hours, they were able to say, hey, I found something, here you go, let's try this. All of a sudden it's fixed and the customer just gushes about G12 support. This is typical, this is common. This is why I go with them. They're a local company, easy access to executives, engineering support, sales support, I will say this, the cutover that I'm sitting in, I'm in their conference room right now, uh, working on, on a couple things here and there. But um, cutover day, the customer said, hey, we, we need to make some changes. Four hours before the cut last Thursday, four hours prior to the cut, we need to make 77 changes to users. I got a phone call in to the person in charge of the cut and the design. He says, you know what? No problem. Already took care of it. We're done. Cutover was successful. You can't do that with everybody, you know? You just can't, you can't buy that folks. Um, so it's not just BS. Um, I, again, I work with all the different providers, I sell them all. I love selling G12 and when I'm with my customers, I tell them it's about the experience and what you're gonna see. And I tell them the experiences my other customers have had and they go, wow, I've gotta talk to them. So not only do you get great SIP trunking, not only do you get UC and, and CC and, and analog pots replacement. You get a customer that's flexible and fast on their feet and ready to help. They care. Every single person, I can tell you who's in charge of the ports. I can tell you who's in charge of the designs, who's on engineering support after the sale. Uh, Rick, everybody in the organization is all in on supporting the customer and, so, and by the way, supporting me. I've made a couple of screw ups over the years where I've said, hey, I forgot to quote of this or a quote of that. You know what I get back? We got your back. We've got your back. That's why I'm on this call saying I love G G12 is because they have my back. 
and and they treat my customers incredibly well. And I will I will live it I will leave it at that. Awesome, Scott. Thanks so much, man. That's that was fantastic. Woo, that was amazing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we, we certainly appreciate uh, the uh, uh, the work that you do with us for sure. Uh, we're going to roll into some updates and product reviews from us. So we, we've got uh, a few different updates uh, and we're going to uh, do some mark the calendar things that we're going to talk about here in a moment. So we'll, uh, we'll roll right, right into the uh, product things. But for those of you that don't know what we do, and, and for those of you that don't work with us on a regular basis, but are thinking about it, here's what we do. Uh, we've got a cloud PBX solution that we offer. And if you've ever worked with other carriers that have a NetSapiens platform, it's a, it, that's what we offer. Now we've got some special sauce that we put all around it, right? So our mobility is a bit different. There's a lot of different things we put around it, but we offer a NetSapiens platform. Uh, we do uh, some SIP trunking and secure SIP trunking. And our secure SIP trunking has predominantly been into call center uh, applications these days. So as an example, we're HIPAA compliant uh, and uh, PCI compliant. So we end up doing lots and lots of banking and lots and lots of healthcare. And then all those organizations ultimately have uh, potentially a, a call center solution that they have, whether it's a uh, Cisco or whether it's uh, a hosted one like in contact F five nines, talk desk, uh, and, um, Oh, and Genesis, right? And the reason I mentioned those four is because those are obviously those are big four, uh, the big four uh, contact center providers, and and they're in the you know magic quadrant and all that great stuff. But we have direct connectivity into those organizations, so we do secure SIP trunking into those organizations, so that your customers don't have to pay usage; they can instead pay for uh, trunking, uh, you know, for, you know that's consistent from a cost perspective. That being said, we do have our own contact center solution. It is fantastic. It's omni-channel. Uh, it sits, uh, you know, sits in between uh, the phone solution, our, so our our phone solution, and the customer's applications. So we can bring in the integrated customer applications, like if they want to work in Salesforce or Zendesk or their ordering platform, and tie in, you know, do APIs to whatever applications they're using, so that we can create some streamlined flow for uh, for your uh, for your customers. The big thing behind call center, and I don't need to tell you guys about call center, call center, but Ultimately, what happens is you start to you start to chip away at not necessarily costs associated with voice, but you start to chip away at operational costs, right? Headcount, those sorts of things. When you start to put streamlined processes in place with an efficient contact center solution like G12, so a UCAS, CCAS solution blended together makes for a really, really harmonious organization. All right, we've got our cloud PBX for Microsoft Teams. Guess what? That is the same exact product as the cloud PBX with mobility over here. It's the same exact product, but what we do is we have our SBCs out in Azure and in three different data centers across the US. And what we do is we bring in your Microsoft Teams uh, uh, you know, um, interface as a soft phone essentially into that cloud PBX solution. There's a lot of reasons why people choose cloud PBX for Microsoft Teams over Microsoft Teams direct routing, both of which we do. And we've got a whole webinar on this because it does get quite complex if you don't live in the world every single day for Microsoft stuff, it does get quite complex to kind of figure out what's right for a customer because Microsoft Teams direct routing is dial tone into Teams and you make Teams your phone system. You're building everything out of Teams. Cloud PBX for Microsoft Teams is we're building it on our Cloud PBX solution. We're managing it. We're, we're doing all the moves, ads, and changes. We just let you do what you want to do, which is make calls in and out of Teams. So two separate solutions, we supply up with, provide them both. So it doesn't really matter to us which one your customer chooses. But when you want to talk teams, you're going to want to talk to G12. And then ancillary services like fax and toll free and all those things, we certainly provide those as well. So that is kind of in a nutshell, what we do here at G12. And I venture to say that we do them all uh, with, with extreme competence and um, an extreme flexibility and affordab affordability for your customers. All right, let's hit the next slide there. Oh, partner success story with Scott Moeller. So this is where we do this whole announcement where we go, Scott Moeller, now, now he's already laid, laid down everything for you. And he's already talked about how, you know, how much he enjoys working with G12. But this is where we kind of go, Scott, we really appreciate you and you are our partner of the quarter. So I'm going to make a total mess in here by going... How about that? We got some props in the <laughs> That's area. That's pretty cool. Yeah, baby. Now you got to clean that up. <laughs> I know, I know. So there's our partner of the quarter, Scott Moeller. Scott, we certainly appreciate all of the, man, that was awesome, wasn't it? We certainly appreciate uh, all the work you do with G12. And uh, we appreciate you letting us support your customers. Um, we'll always take care of them. All right. Anything else to add, Scott? 
Uh, just sorry, I had to disappear. We're hooking up an Algo overhead paging unit uh, for the new system, so had to go lend a hand. But gotcha. I'm back. All right, very good. All right, well, uh, again, Scott, thanks for for thanks. Uh, appreciate you you being here to to uh, to talk about uh, your experience with G12. So, okay, uh, Scott, before I move on, any last words at all? Are you good? I, I'm good, and I, you know, I just want to impart to everybody because we all do the same thing for a living, and we all work with our customers. Feel really good when you hand your customer over to G12. Feel really good that they're going to get taken care of. Nobody's going to drop the ball. Nobody's going to screw anything up, and it's going to be a great experience. And and it's it's just bottom line. It's I haven't had a bad experience yet, and I can't say that about any of the other providers I've worked with. There you go. Awesome. Thank you so much, Scott. All right, Jackie. It's yours, the partner portal. This is your baby. You built this thing for our partners. You listen to our partners. You take their feedback. You make changes. You update things. And, uh, and it's, it's fantastic. We love the information that's in there. So why don't you let us uh, get a little, little peek at it. If you haven't seen the partner portal yet, you're going to have to go register to jump into the partner portal because it's pretty awesome, the information that you can get out to support your customers. So Jackie, take us through it. Yeah, for sure. So I'm just going to, I'm sure most of you have already signed in, but if you haven't, I'm just going to go through how to gain access, how to request a quote, our playbooks, how to co-brand an asset. Um, the fact that you can like live chat with G12 through the partner portal is pretty awesome and how to win prizes with G12. So let's jump into that. Let me hold on here. There we go. So if you haven't already had an account for G12, you just have to go down here when you go to partners.g12com.com. Just request an account. You put in your company email. So me, I would put in at g12.com, no Gmails or anything. Once you put that through, you hit next, and then you can fill all your information. And once you do that, you will get an email uh, confirming your account. You click through that, and then you'll have full access to the partner portal. Once you log in, you'll go here to the dashboard. And I want to focus on the how to request a quote first. So you can access it here through the quick links down here or pipeline on the side here. I'll show you. Oh, sorry. Don't look at me to log in one more time. <laughs> yeah. So once you get here, you're going to go up to this blue button up here, request a quote, and then you can put in all your information, the same you would have with Wendy before through email, but now we want to be completely on the partner portal. We don't want to do emails anymore. So we're just going to, oh, I did a quick one. This one, there we go. Yeah, so once you click on say Cloud PBX, then you can go through and you can click your device type, how many of the device you want. You can put more than one device type, all that good stuff. And then once you submit it, you'll hopefully get a email back or a quote back from Wendy within one, we said one to two business days, right, Eric? Yes. Uh, well, it's 24 hours. Yeah, 24, 24 hours. hours. Yeah. Within 24 hours, you'll get a you'll get a quote back from Wendy, and it just like streamlines our whole uh, quote system so much more than email does, and you can't miss anything this way. So definitely utilize this if you already haven't. Um, next, we'll go into playbooks. So we've categorized all the services into playbooks, so you can, if you want to sell Cloud PBX to a customer, just hit Cloud PBX, and everything is there. You don't have to go and searching for it. It's all there for you. You can get support documents, FAQ, data sheets, videos, battle cards, presentations, anything you want. It's right here. Um, then you can go, if you see these icons here, the little green triangle, you can actually co-brand those assets. And once you get into here, you can hit co-brand. You can actually upload your own logo. Uh, I don't have a logo ready, but once it comes in, um, you can just drag it from the top, put it down here. There's a faint gray box that I outlined for you guys. So it's easy, you can't mess it up. Um, and then you can also put in text. So if you wanna put in your contact information, you can put it down there and then you can just download the document. And then you can give that to your client, your customer, whoever you wanna give it to. And it has your information on it and it has all of G12's information. And last but not least, this is something new we have just introduced. Uh, we wanna do gamification. So if you hover over your name, you can go to leaderboard and we have just introduced this. Um, Rick will touch on it a little bit after me, but um, ways to earn. Right now we are doing a thousand points if you register a deal. And when you get to, when you close a deal, you actually have a chance to win an iPad, uh, enter for a chance to win an iPad. I think we do an iPad Air. Um, but yeah, hopefully later on, we'll add a bunch more ways to earn points, like 
you log on so many times or you open so many assets, but right now we're just doing this. You can actually also see who in your company you're up against as well. So you can see, uh, we all have zero points right now as it just launched, but as you register more quotes, you'll get, you'll get your point total up there. And actually this is the last thing, um, I almost forgot about it, the live chat, which is like one of the most important features. Um, so yeah, I can click right now and I can, I can go chat with Rick right now and get immediate support on anything in the portal. You can actually see everything that you just visited. So you don't have to explain it too hard. If you wanna get help on this, just click on Rick's picture there and you can fill out your name, send a message and he'll he'll get back to you as soon as start, possible. Start chatting but, with you, yeah. Yeah, well, start chatting with you. Any of the G12 experts here. Um, yeah, expert help right away. And that is, that's the, my update on the portal. Awesome. Um, yeah, I will jump back into that was awesome, Jackie. Thank you very much. I think that was great. Yeah, and guys, the partner portal was built for 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 you guys, right? So, uh, making it easy for you to pull quotes out, making it easy for you to find content, making it easy for you to deliver information that's important for you, uh, so that you can uh, uh, drive uh, revenue into your customer, right? So, uh, if you have any questions on on that con on the content there or on the on the partner pages, or you'd like to see something. You let it let us know because we can we can sort of make that happen, right? There's videos, there's PowerPoints, like Jackie said, there's uh, battle cards, all that stuff is in there. It's really helpful when you're uh, in, in in the nice thing is you can you can you can kind of uh, organize it the way you want to organize it. It's really flexible that way, so it's really uh, exciting to see that come together. And as Jackie just mentioned, so uh, the uh, the partner portal allows you to put quotes through there, and that's how we're doing all of our quotes these days. And almost exclusively, our partners are putting all the quotes through the partner portal. But what we decided to do is to drive the right behavior, we're going to give away some prizes. And so, uh, and this is part of the gamification stuff that just was turned on and just re recently sort of um, uh, launched. So what we're doing is if you, uh, if you put, uh, if you put quotes or is it uh, register to close a deal or register and close a deal. So if you close a deal in the next three months, you are entered to win an iPad uh, air that's attached to a Tesla. I'm just kidding. It's an <laughs> iPad air. <laughs> All right. So you're going to win an iPad air. Uh, you know, you can never have enough screens around. You can put these screens everywhere. They're fantastic, right? So, um, so I'm excited. Make sure you put your quotes in the partner portal, and uh, and we'll and if you need support doing it, we've got uh, people standing by. If they're green, you can chat with them right then and there, and they'll walk you through. Because guess what? We can see when you're in the partner portal. We can see what you're doing in the partner portal through the chat. So, okay, I think that's uh, that's it. And now we're coming to this spot in our call that gets really exciting. Um, so. Uh, Colin and I have known each other for a while, and uh, like I said, he was a former CEO and founder of Monster Void before he successfully uh, uh, sold his organization, and uh, and now uh, runs Salescast, uh, which is focused on um, which is focused on uh, uh, delivering uh, podcast sort of technology and stuff to B two B organizations. And I'll tell you what, uh, I get so excited because I see Colin uh, online on LinkedIn. I see, you know, some of the productions that he's done. I see, uh, I watch his, his podcast. And so uh, it's really exciting to have him here talk about how he sell, he sells um, uh, or helps other customers sell B2B services uh, with SalesCast. So Colin, thanks for joining us. And, uh, and man, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's learn what you've got, man. Let's take it away. Awesome. Thanks for having me. I just want to know how I qualify for the iPad connected to a Tesla. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a that's called a big big deal. So <laughs> you have to pre you, you have to pre order those and and wait five years to get them go. or something. There, right? there you go, something like that. <laughs> yeah, um, awesome. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, uh, what we do here at Salescast is we help people in the B two B space drive revenue through podcasting. And there's a few different ways you can do that. Um, what I've prepared today is the two that I think would be most relevant for people in this space. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here and hopefully everybody can see it. Okay. Everybody can see my screen. All right. Yep. All right. Awesome. It. So we're going to talk about how to create a revenue first podcasting strategy. All right. And a little bit about myself. I live in Los Angeles with my wife and yes, that's not a typo Four kids. Uh, and a little puppy as well. So clearly I get bored easily and we're a little crazy. <laughs> I enjoy cycling, swimming, and I've been practicing mindfulness for 10 plus years. Um, on the business front, I've founded four different, four different companies, grew my first business from zero to 5 million in 26 months, had one successful exit. 
Uh, I've been named a top sales influencer on LinkedIn by a, a B2B tech company. And I also host a top 1% podcast where we just crossed over a million total downloads. Um, so I'm the co-founder and CRO over at SalesCast. And let's talk about who we are. So SalesCast is the operating system for B2B podcasting. We're made up of community, of sales and marketing professionals, um, as well as revenue humans as well. Um, we have inclusive online community. We have paid community. And we do fully done for you production, manage guest tours, and then we have a community of 450 plus podcasters that are doing this thing on their own without utilizing somebody like us, getting the help, resources, and support that they need. All right, so who is this for? This is for founders, entrepreneurs, sales leaders, anybody who's in a growth uh, or potentially marketing role, um, this is relevant for you. So this is just kind of our, like part of our sales process, but it helps sort of paint a picture. Think about where you're at, how you're currently doing things, what maybe your goals are, your revenue goals. Um, maybe you have a content goal. Maybe you want to start investing in your personal brand to drive sales. Anything that you're trying to improve, okay? And then today we're going to talk about some things that you can maybe implement and a podcast can complement those things and help you hit, hit those goals, all right? So why podcasting? Uh, podcasting has been growing like crazy, um, an interesting stat that really I just read the other day was <clears throat> about a, about six months ago, a report came out where podcast advertising alone uh, in 2020 was one uh, $1.3 billion, okay? And that's because brands understand the uh, what the value is of getting the attention of a podcast listener, all right? And it was estimated that that was going to double and hit $2.7 billion by 2025. Well, a report just came out last month. We're going to hit that 2.7 billion this year in 2022, basically three years ahead of schedule because podcasting is growing like crazy. Um, a lot of people are trying to create content on social or YouTube, and they just don't know that podcasting is actually a way less competitive space. And you can own a space and a niche if you stay consistent with it. And so it's still a great time to get into podcasting. And the reason that I personally fell in love with the activity when I went on my first podcast about two and a half years ago is the single activity can serve so many purposes. And, and we'll get into that a little bit. Um, but here's the, here's the reality. Well, there's 2.7 plus uh, million podcasts today. Uh, half of them fail. Half of them never make it to episode 10 and they give up uh, and are no longer publishing episodes today. Um, shows that work with us, all, every show in our network is in the top 10% or higher of their category. Many of them in the top 5%, 1% of their space um, by following some of the things that we're going to talk about today. All right. So here's what you want to think about is, well, if you've never really guested on shows or maybe you don't have a lot of experience creating content, then a great comfortable place to dip your toe in the water is to start guesting on shows. I don't recommend that you start a podcast if you don't listen to podcasts, if you've never guessed it on a podcast, or you just don't have any experience creating any sort of content, maybe video, audio, or even written. Um, but guesting on shows is a really easy place to start. So let's kind of look at the two and what the trade-offs are. So starting a show, one of the major benefits is you own the audience. You own the attention of those people. And whoever you sell to in your business, that's who you want your audience to be. And so you own the attention of them every single time. Everybody's connected to their device, right? It's attached to their hip. Um, and every time you publish a new episode, they get a push notification to this device and you're, they're plugging you into their ears and you're building trust and rapport with them, all right? Uh, it's great for relationship building, not just the one-to-many through your audience, but also the one-to-one. -one. Now, this is why most people give up and fail. They view podcasting as only a marketing activity and they think, frankly, it's a waste of time and they give up before they see any results because it does take time. Well, if you have a direct sales component, but let's say I wanna do business with Rick. Well, I'm gonna invite Rick on my show. 
and I'm going to deliver Rick an experience. And he's going to skip my traditional sales and marketing funnel. And Rick's going to be sitting right at the top of my trust funnel because I added value from day one. We collaborated, we created content together, and then it gets to a sales conversation at some point, um, but I'm not leading with that. And, you know, podcasting is not going to solve all of your prospecting challenges. But if you had a list of like a hundred accounts where you're like, these are dream accounts. If I landed these accounts, these would change the trajectory of my business. This would, you know, put the big fat commission check in my pocket that I've been dreaming about. And those are the people that you invite on your podcast. Sky, right. I, uh, uh, I don't mean yeah. to interrupt you, but Colin, but yeah. boy, is that, it, it, it sounds an awful lot like the podcasting is like the new dinner. You yeah, know, it's exactly. like, it, it's like, instead of uh, going to dinner with someone and, and, and sitting there, you know, you, you, you collaborate together and, and yeah. you gain each other's sort of professional, re professional respect, like right out of the gate. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. exactly. I've never heard that um, analogy, but it absolutely makes sense. Here's the great thing. You can only have one dinner. Well, hopefully you can only have one dinner per night. Right? Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. But you know, you can do multiple podcasts in one day. Right. Yeah. Um, so, and so here's the other benefit of starting a show is it also opens up additional revenue streams. So you're building relationships with the people you don't want to work with. You also could do some affiliate marketing, or you could work with some of your partners. They might sponsor some episodes or put some money behind it. Um, you can also, you have more control of the conversation, right? So you're in the driver's seat. All right. Now let's look at guesting on shows. Well, it's more efficient. It's not going to take as much time. It's not as big of a commitment. You can literally just show up, give a good story, have fun, drive some leads. All right. Um, the, 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 the major benefit is you can tap into an audience that already exists rather than building one from scratch, which takes time and can be hard. Um, and you can target specific shows, right? So for in this case, maybe, maybe you work well in a specific industry. Well, what podcasts are they listening to? Those are the shows you want to go on, all right? You could go more broad. Maybe you go on business, entrepreneurship shows. That's a little more broad. But if there's like industry-specific shows that you play really well in, those are great shows for you to go on, all right? Um, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, who doesn't like talking about themselves? <laughs> uh, awesome. All right. So here's, you know, here's how people have been trying to scale. You know, robotic LinkedIn DMs, automated emails, underperforming ads with all of the changes, fancy retargeting mousetraps, pushing people through funnels and squeeze pages, all that other crap that's really hard and doesn't work because frankly, a lot of people have ruined it for us. Um, there's a new way. People are craving authentic relationships, okay? Um, so through a story-driven you know, podcast, uh, you know, and you can develop relationships, you can lead with growth, you can you know, have community behind it, mission, purpose, make an impact. And we all know that, our network equals our net worth. And the podcast is the perfect place to build a high quality network, all right? So, and this is the part that I love the most. So it accelerates the trust funnel, right? We buy from people we know, like, and trust. Whether you agree or disagree with that, um, you're gonna have to tolerate this for about 30 seconds. Uh, we're gonna reach, you know, you're gonna reach out to people and they're gonna skip the traditional funnel. You're gonna invite anybody that you want onto your show using an outreach method that gets a positive reply 80 to 90% of the time, okay? And it's so simple, it's stupid. If I reached out to anybody on this, on this webinar today and sent you a simple two-sentence message, I have this particular podcast, I think you'd be great, and I'd love for you to come on and talk about these particular things, hit, hit us in the chat. Like, who would say yes? Is there anybody that would say no? I, I'd say yes. And like, can we do it tomorrow? Yeah, so if you're strategic about your targeting, and you ask the right people that you need to build relationships with to drive revenue for your business, this works so well. It works too well. People end up sitting in podcasts way more than they planned. Um, so it increases your close rate. So we've seen this work in top of funnel where it's like somebody I've never talked to before and I reach out to them and have them on the show and they become a client or referral source, source or both, okay? We also see it work really well in the mid funnel, mid to, to, to later in the funnel where it's like, we're engaged, the deal has kind of been stalling, right? This is where Rick would be like, hey, I'd love to take you out to dinner, right? <laughs> Instead, it's like, hey, I'd love for you to come on my podcast and talk about how freaking awesome you are. Well, those deals move forward faster. Uh, and so 
Um, it, and it also shortens the sales cycle. Like we've, we've, you know, we manage 80 of the top B2B podcasts. Okay. And we get feedback and we are really deep into the strategy of these shows. We are not just a content house. People work with us because we know how to get these shows to generate money for their business. And we're creating those strategies with them. Um, and so we're hearing from them, you know, it's shortening the sales cycles. People who come on our podcast of this particular ICP deals close at a much faster pace. Um, and you could also use it to strengthen, you know, existing relationships. Like if Rick had a podcast, he would want to have Scott on there because Scott's his best part, you know, he's the partner of the quarter, right? <laughs> so um, here's, so here's what you want to think about. And you don't have to pick one. You can have a sales-driven podcast, right? This is focused on relationships. Um, or you can have a brand-driven podcast, maybe where it's like more about promoting your stuff and brand awareness, but they also can co coexist and work together. I'm not going to spend too much time here because I know we're, uh, oops, getting, oops. All right. So here's how you pick the relationship path for a sales-driven podcast, okay? My, fav my favorite is the one right there in the middle. Who are your clients? Build relationships, invite them on your show. Okay, here's a little bit more longer tail. Well, who do your clients follow? Who are the people that they look up to that are thought leaders in their space? Well, you invite them on your show and then their followers, their connections, their relationships become yours. Okay, that's a little bit of a longer tail strategy and you can do a little bit of both. Do you wanna see faster ROI? Stick in the middle, your exact ideal client because you're more in control of that situation. Um, and then like, this would be great if, you know, uh, for G if G12 was to have a podcast, well, who are more people that they want to be partners? Those are people they can invite on a show, have conversations, talk about industry stuff. And what do you know? They might start sending some, some start action, start sending new deals or start sending more deals your way. Um, here, here's just a little bit of context. I haven't looked at these numbers in a little while. Um, but my podcast, I think the last time I checked it, it generates about $40,000 a month for my business, okay? Across three different revenue streams. Um, about 60% of that is people who coming on becoming clients for us, okay? The other is ad revenue. And then I have a small revenue stream where people pay to come on my show. They'll pay $600 to come on for a 30 minute interview. It's a small revenue stream, um, but I've broken it. And there's more, there's more options than that. That's just the three that I've stuck with. And so this gives you a bit of an idea now we've crossed over a million downloads um, and our, our ad inventory is fully sold out. We have two pre-rolls, a mid-roll and two post-rolls. Anything more than that would be obnoxious and we'd probably start losing listeners. Um, but you can also convert guests to clients, add revenue, promote your own stuff, affiliate marketing, paid guests. There's subscription model, community, Patreon. There's all kinds of options. So, and here's kind of what it looks like to just, you know, when you, we, we, we really focus on the guest experience, right? So that means when the person comes on your show, it's easy to book it. You collect all of the information. It looks professional. It's automated, all of that sort of stuff. We use what's like a guest funnel. Um, they come on, you're a good host. You actually like care, ask good questions, show up prepared, you know, things like that. And then you give them a piece of content that's lifting them up making them look like, hopefully I can swear on here because I'm going to do it anyway. You make them look like a badass. Like people remember how you make them feel. And that is a huge contributor to if and when they buy from you. Okay. And this is all about making them feel good. Um, so here's a cold bucket of water. Is guessing a better place to test the waters? Yes. Why? Because people who listen to podcasts, are more affluent people. They typically have a household income of 250,000 or more. Um, and they're your decision makers. So your buyers are listening to podcasts. You just need to decide, should you guest on shows or should you have your own show? And I'm not making this up. This is right out of Russell Brunson, Traffic Secrets, if you're familiar. If not, there's the reference, just so you know I'm not full of it and making this stuff up. Um, I'm not gonna go into this. Um, here's, here's a, I'm just going to give you a really simple formula. If you're like guesting on shows is an easy task for me to maybe start. Here's how you do it. Do your homework on the podcast, check out an episode or two, write a killer review, know the host's actual name. <laughs> it's a funny one, but like, 
sometimes there's multiple hosts, right? And so, you know, making sure that you do a little bit of research, use personalized video in your outreach, mention something you learned on an episode that you write them a review, what sort of value you can bring your story, your experience to the listeners. Podcasters care about three things. They care about reviews. They care about uh, if you can provide education or value to their listeners. And they also care that you actually know a thing or two about their show. Okay. So if you can touch those three things, you're going to get a really good success rate. But the trick is they're not always going to reply on the first email. So you do need to follow up multiple times. Don't get offended if they say no. Don't think it's a no if they don't respond. You really need to reply at least five to eight times to get their attention. Most of these people are also entrepreneurs or business leaders. They're busy or they do this in their free time. So to expect this to be the top priority is ridiculous. So just make sure you follow up if you're going to go that route. I have a question for you, Colin. Yeah. So, so, so if you're if you're looking at guesting at, on, on some podcasts and and you you've you've identified you know you know I don't know ten different podcasts that are interesting to you, you know uh, what's what's like the appropriate amount of uh, of volume that you would want to let's say uh, participate in so that you could actually see if from a potentially guesting some sort of results. Let's just say you 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 know is there results from guesting? Could you gain results from guesting and and two? you know, what would you think is the appropriate amount of sort of volume of consistency? If I just said, you know, I'm not going to go build a podcast just yet. That seems way too complex for me right now, but, but, but guesting sure seems pretty interesting to me. Yeah. It's tough because it depends on the podcast, right? So you can use a resource called listennotes.com. And on there, you can search any podcast that there is known to man. Um, and you, it also shows you the quality of the show. So I would only focus on shows that are the top 10% or higher because they have a more established audience and it's worth your time. Uh -huh. um, in the beginning, when you're getting started, like I would guest on any show because the reality is you're going to suck at it at first and you'll get better if you do it regularly. All right. Um, and so the bigger the show, the more your, your results you're going to get, but there's kind of some things that matter and, and, and will determine uh, whether it's success, it's a successful activity or not. And one of them is going on the right shows. Okay. So we kind of talked about that, um, being a good guest, right? So you don't want to go on there and it's a big sales pitch because people aren't going to listen to that and it's boring. Okay. So craft your story, your message. Maybe you have a mission. Um, everybody has a story. So start getting comfortable sharing it. And that's what the majority of the content should be for the podcast. Now the podcast host is going to keep the conversation going. Um, so you don't have to worry about that too much. And then at the very end is where you sort of put a bow on it um, and have one killer call to action. Right. And so I think the next slide talks about this uh, community collaboration. Oh, okay. So um, here's, here's the thing. So with the call to action, a lot of people do this. Every podcast ends, hey, Rick, thanks so much for coming on my show. How can people connect with you? Yeah. And here's the mistake that most people make. Oh, uh, my company website is G12. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. It's Rick, you know, Garcia, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, I love talking about fantasy football on Twitter. And, and they just give you all. And then I'm, you know, if, if I'm actually single, if you're looking for, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, they give you way too much, right? So have one single call to action. You can get creative. Maybe it's like, Hey, go to freestrategycall.com. If you're having challenges with your, you know, technology or, you know, call center, like there's call center, uh, or customer experience podcast. There is right. So you can go on those types of shows. So know who you're going, who know who the audience is and cater the call to action to attract them and have something of value to offer them and make it seem unique because podcast listeners love to feel like, oh my gosh, I only found out about this because I was listening to my favorite podcast and I'm getting a special deal or I'm getting something that has some sort of value for free. Um, so you, the, the call to action is a really important piece as well as being a good guest. And then here's the other thing. So many people go on shows and they're so worried about like, how many people are going to click my offer and reach out and book a meeting with me? And they forget about the most important thing, which is the host. The host holds the keys to a lot of things. The, the host, typically they're entrepreneur people themselves. Sometimes they might have a community and then they might say, hey, I'd love for you to come back and host a webinar for my private community. They might have a massive email list 
They might have a blog that they want you to contribute to. They might ask you to come back again. They might introduce you to their podcast friends. If you don't have good etiquette in treating the host properly and showing gratitude, um, you're going to miss so many opportunities. A lot of times the host might even be a good fit to do business with you. But if you go there and you give a big garbage sales pitch, um, and then you don't like send them a, at least like a thank you note or maybe a personalized gift or something like that if you really want to take it to the next level. So working that relationship is really important um, because it can open up so many doors for you. You must have been present on every podcast that I've guested on when they ask me, how do they get a hold of you? <laughs> <laughs> it's go to g12com.com. Hit me up on LinkedIn. We'll see you, folks. No. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, going to your social media, like, so for me, uh, we'll just role play for a minute, right? So if like I go on a podcast, I have two goals. One is either to grow my podcast. And if that's the case, if I have a podcast, that's the best way to grow your podcast. And so I'll just promote my podcast nothing else. The other one, maybe if we're not talking about podcasting as much on that episode, maybe it's more entrepreneur, maybe it's more like sales focus. Um, then I will, um, uh, then I will promote a free strategy call. Um, and I have a unique link that makes it really simple for people to go there. Right. So I might say something like, Hey, if you're thinking about starting a show, you have a show that you're looking to grow or you're wanting to guest on shows, we offer a free, you know, podcast strategy call exclusive for listeners on the G12 partner podcast. And you can go to podsesh.com to book a free, you know, pod, uh, uh, free strategy call. Uh, so that's my call to action that I do. Um, but I, I keep it simple and I know my audience and I basically switch it up depending on what the goal is. And that's awesome. Well, that just a whole bunch of information in there. And that's, uh, I'll tell you what, um, I do tend to think that podcast listeners are, are more, uh, informed, uh, you know, they take the time to listen to things. So they, they tend to be, I, I can totally relate to that. They tend to be the, um, either more affluent or, 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 you know, decision makers and stuff like that. So I do think that you're, um, if you're working in the SaaS B2B space and you're in on podcasts that have, uh, content related to their organization or to their industry, that there's a darn good chance that they're listening to that, to that podcast. And obviously you can go with the resource that you provided to us. Uh, you can go find out if it's a, a popular podcast in that industry, right? So even if you're, I guess, if you're targeting that industry and, and you want to, you know, want to just gain influence in that industry and you can, you can take a look at the ones that are popular and figure out how to get on those things as a guest or, uh, or get to that audience. That's pretty interesting. This is, this is really cool. I mean, um, I, there's just so much in there. I just, I've got, I've got questions for days. Like th this is just super cool. Uh, I think, uh, th Colin, uh, thank you, uh, for, for the time that you've, uh, you put into, to hanging out with us and, and talking through, uh, sales cast. It seems like that's a really cool business and certainly, uh, a, a, a great opportunity for people that sell into organizations or people that are entrepreneurs or salespeople, you know, obviously our, our, our agents and things like that. <clears throat> Uh, to to figure out how they can drive inbound opportunities to them uh, via podcasting because boy that was uh, really cool and we're gonna have more chats after this because this is this is way too cool. Um, okay, what's uh, we got some uh, some a slide here. We're gonna talk about some buzz. So for those of you out uh, uh, watching this uh, this this webinar and, and partners with G12, if you want to see some additional information, if you want to see. G12 doing some podcasts. And I, I'd love to get your opinion, actually. If there, if there was a podcast that you would listen to as partners, what would it be? Um, what, would the, what would the content be like? What, what content would you find interesting uh, on a podcast? Because um, I think it's, uh, this is such a cool, uh, uh, cool medium to start you know, engaging in if you, if you aren't already. Um, I, I listen to podcasts. Oftentimes, it's related to sales uh, or related to entrepreneurship. Or, or, or how to get my life together. <laughs> so all those different things. So, so ultimately those are, uh, uh, you know, I, I listen to those over, I don't listen to radio all that often. I cert, but I certainly listen to, um, uh, uh, podcasts. I'd love the links on the, how to get your life together podcast. <laughs> if you can share that in the chat, please. <laughs> You know, how to be more balanced. Uh, so, so those sorts of things are certainly uh, interested in. But, um, you know, if you want to see uh, some podcast information, like I said, I'd love to get your feedback on that. And then webinars, um, we're going to start rolling out monthly webinars. We, we haven't done a lot of webinars. Um, uh, they're going to be monthly, though. We have a lot of stuff to share. And, uh, and we'd love to be um, uh, to be uh, 
consistent with our webinar deployments. So we're going to certainly do that. Uh, and then our partner of the quarter, Scott's plaque is on his way to him. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if you want to see case studies uh, if, for particular verticals, if you work in a particular vertical, we have healthcare as an example, we have banking, but if there's other verticals that you are uh, are selling into and you'd like to see a case study, you could just uh, hit us up, let us know what you're looking at, let us know if there's opportunities because uh, of the thousands and thousands of customers that G12 has, we have uh, we like to consider everyone on our network a happy customer. Uh, we could certainly go out and create a case study specific for you to help target your existing opportunities. So, and we can whip those out pretty darn quickly. Uh, you know, if you want to see specific blogs and things like that, we, we'd love to get involved with you uh, and, and, and help grow your business and figure out how you help, you know, generate opportunities with G12. So if there's a blog post that we can share in uh, other events, let us know. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. So, you know, so there you go. Um, what's next there, Jackie? All right. Some announcements. Okay. Uh, we're having a massive Teams webinar, uh, June 23rd, and stay tuned for the invite because the um, uh, Teams mystery is uh, is still out there for a lot of organizations and for a lot of partners. Uh, so um, there's a lot of different ways to deploy Teams into an organization, and people are still confused. Certainly, your customers are confused, and I can tell you that because we work with IT as an example quite often, and sometimes IT teams uh, don't uh, have a clear direction on how they would like to deploy Teams. All they know is they want to make calls in and out of Teams. They just don't know how to accomplish it with their existing environment. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I think there's four that I count uh, ways to deploy Teams. We'd love to help you um, work through how to deploy for your customers. So we're going to put this massive webinar together. When I say massive, you know, this is the first webinar where we're going to go buy lots and lots of advertising, probably visit a bunch of podcasts so that we can uh, generate uh, all sorts of um, uh, all sorts of visitors because I think it's something that people would find really, really helpful. It's not going to be a salesy webinar. It's going to be here's how you can deploy teams in your organization, bottom line, period. We got a few guests uh, lined up for that as well. So that's going to be a really cool event. Following that, we're going to roll out our Cloud Contact Center webinar. That's going to be in July. Uh, so you'll see the invite for the Cloud Contact Center webinar. And that's going to be mostly about how to drive customer experience into your organization. So not just for partners, this is for end users as well. How can you drive customer experience in your organization? And certainly, how can your partner help you with that? And, uh, and lastly, but certainly not least, we have been accepted into the Microsoft Connect Operator Connect or Operator Connect platform. Uh, we are the fifth carrier chosen by Microsoft to be fifth US-based carrier uh, to be chosen by Microsoft to be in the Operator Connect platform. What that means is organizations with your, um, with your support, organizations can uh, jump into Teams and, uh, and select G12 as their operator or as their dial tone provider in their Teams environment. So there's opportunities there for you to uh, work with your customer to direct them into Operator Connect and, um, uh, and then uh, uh, that's, you know, you'll, you'll be able to pull down dial tone right from there. Thanks so much, Colin. Take care, bud. Uh, and then, uh, and then finally, uh, anything else uh, after the G12 announcements there, Jackie? What would you like to see next? So, you know, we've got stuff coming on teams. You know, we've got stuff coming on, call, uh, on contact centers. Is there anything out there that you would like to see? And do you have any questions, uh, not about podcasting because Colin just hopped off, but uh, anything that you would like to see? Uh, uh, next from G12 Communications or as a partner, do you have any questions related to today's partner webinar? Is it open for questions now, Jackie? Um, the chat's open if anyone wants to join the chat. All right. If we don't have uh, uh, any questions, I'll see you, Jerry. Thanks so much for hopping on. Appreciate it. <laughs> I love you, 12. <laughs> uh, um, any any follow-up questions on any of the information today? We're going to go once, going twice, three times, and we're going to call that soul. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. We appreciate it. You have a lovely Thursday afternoon. Take care, everybody. Bye for now. <laughs>